Hi, it's Debbie here. As most of you know, the new Silhouette Studio 3.0 has come out and I'm letting you know right now, so in case any of you are confused, I am using the Silhouette Studio Designer Edition and I'm also running um, two versions, well three versions of this software on my computer. I have the, the old 2.0 and I have the 2.9.45, the most recent one before this, they're called the Legacy. And then I have this. Now when I things first began and I first opened it up and I found out I created a file, then I tried to open it up in my older version, it would not open. This is going to happen. Um, I talked to Silhouette about this. They know that this is an issue, but with the buildings that they put into this software, they um they're going they're working on a way to make it where we can still open it up with a legacy edition now for those of you like me who have been using the 2.0 to convert it to the svg files if they're only going to make it where it's compatible with the legacy version we're going to have problems but that being said, I guess when I share cutting files, they're probably just going to have to be in studio and um, unless I want to create them in like Corel Draw or something like that and save them as SVGs and then bring them in. But I'm not there yet, so we're going to get busy with this. Today, um, I worked on, I made this little pop-up horse thing that I was going to do a print and cut on. And I went over here and I set up my registration marks and I'm going to show you how you do that. You when it says style, you will go here. You can turn them off by doing this, or you select type one. That's for your cameo and your portrait. And then type two is the original, which I still have my original. And you can still select the lengths and the thickness and all that good stuff. But I just did it as it was. But if you look, did you notice something missing? Okay, those little hash marks that tell us not to get outside of this little area. Well, I discussed this with Silhouette as well. They are also going to work on bringing that back. And, um, but I have to say, when I cut this this morning, I, as long as I left it right here in this area, it worked out perfectly. I didn't, it didn't go outside the cut lines or anything else, but they do need to bring it back. We just need to know for sure that when we cut this, it's not going to cut like say this was just a little bit more over here like this okay let me undo that okay now here was the other issue that I had when I did this print and cut if we go to our cut settings and I have chosen by color because I didn't put this on layers okay I chose by color and I'm going to just go and do plain cardstock here, okay? Because you have to select the kind of material you, you are using before you can do any of this. So if I click, have all these clicked, and look at this. It's all selected. It's all ready to cut. But even though, let's go back here, I have this set up with little perforated lines. It's a good thing that I made them in a different color because when I did this, and I had just gone to my cut settings and set it up just like this. It cut all of the perforations out as straight line cuts. Owie! So this is what you do. You're going to cut by, by color. You're going to have to turn this off. Well, let, no, we're going to turn these on. I'm going to turn this one off. And then you select your material. And then if you scroll on down here you'll see cut line pattern and for this I've selected for this color just a straight line cut because I want it to cut all around those edges now I'm going to turn these two off turn this back on and we're going to and we have cardstock selected we're going to go down and take a peek at this look what it defaulted to even though I drew these as perforated lines it still shows the style as a straight line cut so, I am going to choose style 4. So, when I run it through the second time through my cameo, I cut all of the red lines first 
and then I ran it through again and I cut these lines and it did perforate. So that's one little thing. I wish there was some way they would set it up just to cut it like on a normal cut. But if this was all in layers, and I'm going to go here to the open layers pane. And as you can see, this is all in one layer. I'm going to try something. Well, actually, let's see. I haven't played with the layers a lot, so I'll probably make another video tutorial on this later on. So anyway, with this being said, these are the things you're going to have to do right now to be able to cut. It's but it's it worked beautifully. That's another thing too. When I used to just go up here and send it to my um, send a silhouette, and it would pop up and say if I wanted to print and all this stuff. No, this time you send that it has a start button here, and I'm not connected to it, so I can't show you on this. But anyway, so it had a start. We'll start cutting. Well. It started cutting and I had nothing loaded into it yet. So I learned from this what I wanted to do is to go to here to send to printer first. I printed it out with all the registration marks, laid it on my mat, then hit that start button. The beautiful thing about it is it didn't have all those other little things. You had to go detect and click detect registration marks automatically, click continue, click this. It just started right up and it worked beautifully. Okay, so let's go over to this here too. Oh, and this is another select by color like this. So I'm going to show you real quick how. And I'm just going to control click, control click, control click. And I'm going to fill with this shift key down, select these two, fill it with a red. Select these two, fill it with a blue, and then I'm going to select by color, and you'll see this little thing pops by feel. So then I want to select by feel, and if I do this, voila, it has selected everything for me by the color. I think that's pretty neat. The other thing is, is I'm going to duplicate these. Um, let's go over here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layers. Oops, nope. Layers thing. And I'm going to column of four. Then I'm just going to kind of move these all around every which place. And reminds me kind of that book, One Spot, the little Dr. Seuss book. Okay, One Spot. Two spots, red spot, blue spot. Well, anyway, I'm being silly. Okay, so now I've got all of these all over this. I'm going to go ahead and change my paper to a letter size paper. And then um, I'm going to select these and I'm going to go to up here, that big N, in for nesting. Select nesting. Let's do that again. Like I said, I'm still learning this myself. And then right here, I'm going to click Nest. And there it goes. What the nesting feature does is it puts all of these very, to save you your paper. So it's taken all of that mess I had over there. Remember, I was, did all this on a 12 by 12 piece um, board. And then I switched it over to a letter size board. And now it's making it fit to save us as much paper as we, we they can save us. So that is cool. Okay, now I'm going to delete these out. And I'm going to show you the other new tool is the Draw Freehand. Now I'm just using, I'm not using a mouse pad or anything else. I'm just using my laptop pad. And I'm going to draw a bunny ear. And if I had my Wacom tablet, I would probably do better, but not all of us have it, but I just wanted to show you the difference. Okay, now I'm going to do this when it's a smooth, the, the smooth freehand tool. And I'm going to draw another bunny ear.
Now for me, I like this one better, much better. But let's go on to one of my favorite new tools. This is drawn in art. I make a lot of pop-up cards. Some of them have to be at 90 degree angles or 45 degree angles or whatever. Look at this baby. Okay, I'm starting out with my arc. And then I just pulled on that little corner and I'm there at 45 degrees. Keep on pulling it around. There I am, 90 degrees. I click on this. I can rotate it around by manually or I could go up to my rotation tool but I just did it manually and I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see it really good so let's zoom in now look here you see this little thing here we can make adjustments to make it wider and wider and wider and wider and we're still at that 90 degree angle. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'm going to go back to fit to window and hopefully my dogs aren't going to be naughty. It's been a day today with them. They have barked at everything they could bark at. So there they go. Oh, that's because I just got a package delivered. I am so sorry. It seems like every other time I do a video, they get naughty. Okay, so right here we have the polygon tool you see it right over here and I just do a regular polygon so that has five sides now I'm gonna zoom in on this again and if I can get my teddy to be quiet and quit being so naughty I'm gonna zoom in on this again and as I slide this up you'll see how the polygon is changing now of course if we go all the way up we may as well have just drawn a circle but there you go I'm going back to fit to window. So what else? Okay, we have down here, we have our, where we open our layers pane. Right here is, we can, oh, offset. We can go right down here now and do an offset. And of course, when you do that, you can still, oh, we want, so we can go. Offset works much better that way that's so probably if you want to do an offset you'll want to use this button here up at the top because this is where you can make your adjustments if you click on this one down here boom as you can see it just does the traditional or default offset that sounds better default offset <laughs> okay and then oh the settings I have to tell you about the settings Okay, we're going to go open the preference pane because when I first launched the Studio 3, I did not like seeing these little bitty teeny tiny icons that I could barely see even with my glasses on. So I went over here to the settings, to the display, and as you can see, I've selected two, number two sample. Okay, when, you, when I did that, I had to relaunch the software to, to make the changes, but if you want your button sizes, to change you just slide this slider right up here because I think this is it came in somewhere around here so I'm gonna hit apply and see how tiny they are again not for me so I'm gonna go back in and go to display and I'm gonna move this baby all the way up to the large now this being said, when I did it on my other computer, which has a smaller screen size, and I put it up as large as it could go, these little icons here disappeared off the bar up here, but there was a little drop-down panel that was right over here on the very edge that I could click on that and get these two. So what I had to do is make some adjustments on, on my other computer because I really didn't like using that little drop-down menu to use these. So anyway, a lot of the things are the same. Some things are different. As you can see, I'm going through all of these. Now there's some things I don't like either because when I also, I go into my line cutting, my settings are here. 
I used to be able to do a little bit of maneuvering around or it would jump back to the screen when I was maneuvering these and now I have to physically go up and click that to get back to this screen. But that's just a little minor thing. There's so many things about this that I love. I know Silhouette America is working hard to fix all of these things for us. They're, they have just the absolute best customer service. I've been in contact with them several times. They are they are amazing. Um, they they appreciate our feedback on this. And as a matter of fact, one of the ladies on our forum, her name is Kay. She has the blog um, Clever Someday. She's brilliant, and they have been in contact with her. Um, if there's anybody that's going to get them set straight on this stuff, it's going to be that lady right there. So. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial or actually video walkthrough showing you some of the, the new features, some of the things I learned. Also, if you want to run more than one version of the software on your computer, you may want to go to the Silhouette Plus forum and you'll find a tutorial there. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm going to go now for my dog start acting naughty again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.